Scarlet Nexus might be a surprise hit for many of you out there, but for me, it was no surprise. The director was Kenji Anabuki, a game developer whom I first heard the name of over 10 years ago when he was working on a game that I still consider my favourite of all time, Tales of Exilia. When I was first given a taste of Scarlet Nexus at a preview event, I couldn't stop thinking about it for weeks, and I would of course go on to give it a glowing review. There was something else I'd been asking for though, and that was an interview. An interview with the man not only responsible for directing one of my favourite games this year, but also a key figure in the development of some of my favourite games of all time. And to my shock, the arrangements were made. I had an interview with Kenji Anabuki, and not just Anabuki-san, but also the Scarlet Nexus producer, Keita Izuka, and even art director Kauta Ochiai chiming in with an answer to an obscure art-related question. Due to pandemic-related complications, particularly in Australia at this time, the interview was conducted through email correspondence, so for purposes of this video, fellow creator and Japanese native speaker Sora has kindly narrated the interview answers. Please refer to the video itself for references on which developer is giving each of the answers. And just before we kick this interview off, I would like to extend my thanks to Anabuki-san, Izuka-san, and ochiai san for taking the time to be part of this video. And now, let's get to it. A large component of the combat in Scarlet Nexus involves borrowing powers from other characters such as Pyrokinesis and Hyper Velocity, but there are powers in the game that players never get access to, like Fubuki's Cryokinesis and Nagi's Air Manipulation. How did you decide on the final set of powers available to players, and are there any powers you would have liked to implement but couldn't for various reasons? We focused on making psionic powers that are easily imagined and mostly heard among conversations available for players to use. After that, we chose the powers that could be implemented to be easily designed and used in-game. Regarding cryokinesis, we have actually experimented with gameplay such as the ability to skate on ice that could be created by the power, however, it didn't really suit the game itself, so we scrapped the idea ultimately. The Scala Nexus team is made up of talented developers from many different backgrounds, Tails, God Eater, Code Vein, and more. Did this present any challenges during development and do you feel that one series influenced Scarlet Nexus more than the others? As there are a lot of experienced staff in the team, it is very important for us to utilize our unique know-hows and experience to the development of the game. Even with that, the things that we found challenging was designing seamless battles in such fields and environments, and also creating a perfect perspective and visual elements for the world while being consistent with the settings where foreignness and oddness is very much emphasized and is the center of the work's art direction. My development experience for Tales of Games have also given a lot of impact to Scarlet Nexus. Personally speaking, I could feel a large Tales influence throughout Scarlet Nexus, but that may be because I am slightly biased. The manga-like cutscenes in Scarlet Nexus in particular felt a lot like an evolution of the skit system from the Tales series. Is this where the inspiration came from? Thank you so much for having fun and being a big fan for the Tales of series. As a similar point with Scarlet Nexus, both games put a lot of emphasis on the portraying of their characters, and for Scarlet Nexus, the static cutscenes are the unique way of character expression while having no direct relationship with one another. The manga or visual novel-like cutscenes have been a point of contention among players since there are also very exciting fully animated cutscenes in the game. Was it tricky finding a balance between the two? Actually, the transition between static and dynamic cutscenes is a unique feature I wanted to make for Scarlet Nexus. Not just transitioning simply by jump cutting into one another, but to be conscious of its effectiveness as a good transition also. For example, in the animated scene when the crows fly into the spot, we don't just cut into another static shot but to transition into static naturally while photos are being taken in the scenario. We know that different players will have different comments on such attempt, but we will definitely take every one of them into consideration and utilize them in the future. Something that struck me immediately when I first selected New Game and saw Yuito and Kasane take their places on the screen was how much it reminded me of Tales of Exilia. 
And Ibuki-san, you were the battle designer for Exilia, and I also noticed during the Scarlet Nexus end credits that Inoki-san, who was one of the Exilia directors, is the Scarlet Nexus scenario director. In many ways, I see Scarlet Nexus as a much more ambitious dual protagonist story, with the two paths diverging greatly in comparison to Exilia, where they only diverge a little. Is the Scarlet Nexus x Tales of Exilia connection accurate, or am I just reading too much into it? Thank you so much for even paying close attention to the staff credits. Actually, there are totally no story connections between TOX and Scarlet Nexus. However, as I reflected on the fact that TOX didn't differentiate too much on the perspectives of both protagonists, we have put extra effort into Scarlet Nexus in order to make the two stories more unique. A satisfying dual protagonist story is something very difficult to pull off, and the Scarlet Nexus team managed to achieve it with the added layer of complexity brought about by having a Scarlet Nexus anime series as well. Were there any specific challenges juggling the two story paths, and how did the anime series factor into the development of the game? We didn't do anything extremely special in order to achieve this, we just made sure we follow along the story's timeline and define all characters' action principles and way of thinking etc. to avoid any contradiction or inconsistency in the scenarios. For the anime, as the game is the original work and the anime's production are all based on the game's design documents, it didn't particularly affect the game's development or scenario. Regarding the world settings, relationships between characters and backbones, we always verbalize and document them to share it among the anime production team to avoid confusion or any problematic story differences. The story moves along very quickly in the last few chapters, and the final chapter is left somewhat open-ended. Can we expect story DLC or even a sequel in the future? We didn't speed up the pace of the story on purpose, but it could be the result of us adapting since at some point we feel that cutscenes are getting long with a lot of characters. We also haven't based the creation of the scenario or story on future expansions of the series. Regarding DLC and sequels, we also do not have any available information currently. Apart from story DLC, one of the biggest requests among players is the addition of more alternate outfits and costumes. There are hundreds of attachments, but only three or four alternate outfits per character. Are there any plans to add more varied alternate outfits? Regarding DLC and sequels, we also do not have any available information currently. However, please stay tuned to recent announcements. Two other highly requested features are an option to turn off gameplay tips, which still appear on the screen after many hours of gameplay, and also a camera mode or screenshot mode. Are either of these something you would like to add in the future? We cannot comment or promise on any future updates. However, we have been hearing on the community's voices and all staff are determined to continuously improve the game for our fans. With that, I hope that our players will continue to give us their comments or constructive criticisms for us to pick up. The phenomenal soundtrack is one of the many things that feels unique to Scarlet Nexus. Almost every track is an entirely different genre of music. There's Japanese rock, dubstep, jazz, classical, lounge and easy listening, orchestral music, etc. Was this something planned from the beginning, or did it develop in response to the way the enemies, the others, were designed as a mashup of humans, animals and objects? For the soundtracks of Scarlet Nexus, they are all created surrounding the concept of expressing the unique brain-punk setting of the world. On top of that, they are produced to match scenarios and also different locations in-game. Although there are a lot of genres, they also have a sense of nostalgia embedded into them. It's all up to the listener to discover. The art and graphical style of Scarlet Nexus is very striking. Blending realistic environments with anime cel-shaded characters is something you do not often see. One small detail some of us have noticed is that the characters themselves have faint CRT scan lines on them. This is particularly noticeable when zooming in. Does this have any in-universe significance, or was this simply an artistic choice? The biggest reason for blending realistic environments and anime-styled characters is because we could increase the amount of information on screen and make visual elements more packed in order to achieve a much more powerful and punchy look. Anime-style characters tend to look bland and flat, so increasing background visual information will make them stand out and be more visible as well. Of course, 
It came up with a lot of challenges while blending the two together, so we took quite a lot of references and hints from different music videos and animation works. Regarding the CRT scan lines, in Scarlet Nexus, they express the lost past. CRT monitors are technologies of the past and we couldn't see these patterns in current monitors and Scarlet Nexus World has put great emphasis on the important lost past element so we have used this particular artistic expression to emphasize that. And finally, I would like to finish off with a question that's a little more light-hearted. The playbase all seem to love Hanabi and Arashi, and Lazy Arashi is very relatable for a lot of people. My favourite character is Kodama, but who are your favourite characters, and which character do you think you relate to the most? This is actually a difficult question, as I always wanted to treat every character fairly. However, as a player, personally, I will say that I like Shiden because of his very humanly characteristics. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you so much for all of your time. Arabuki-san, Izuka-san, Ochiai-san. P.S. If there is story DLC planned, could you make it about the adventures of Kodama Platoon? <laughs> Thank you so much for your questions and love for the title. 